Pike Coach Elliott. That is a hearty summer beard. It is first off, it is a warm here. Yeah. Is it that warm where you guys are? It's in, as hot and humid in, in Bowling Springs as it is, as it is here. So, yeah. You're in the mountains though, a little bit, aren't you? Mm -hmm. The base of them, so not really. How far are you from Asheville? Hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, you're close to the mountains. Yeah, but we're There's not mountains in the mountains. like right there. Well, well, we get two days of snow a year, so we're not really in the mountains. Okay, so you're still low, low elevation. Right, yep. But you're close to Charlotte, too, though. 45 minutes. So Charlotte. I would fly into Charlotte if I came there. Yep. That's where yep. like recruits would come and stuff. Come pick you up. Yeah. I'll show you around. All right. Well, actually, that's something we're going to put we're in the works. We're going Yep. Oh, fall. Excuse me. We're here. We're, you're here recruiting. You got Cody. You got the junkyard dog. Coach Walters out there choking guys out with some side headlocks. Yeah, not his bread and butter. Toughness is his bread and he butter. He claims this is his bread and butter. No, mean, tough, toughness, mean junkyard is, dogness. Right. It's his. Bite you if you ask. Wanting to, to win more. And that's, it comes down to that a lot with him. Okay, so. You, you, so, okay, that's a guy you didn't coach him. No. You got a finished product from Ohio University, a two-time All-American. Right. How do you turn over the stones and find Cody Walters's... How do you find these guys who are going to come and change Gardner Webb? That's the challenge. Um, you know, being a private... Baptist church, uh, Baptist affiliated school. You know, we just don't attract those guys off the street a lot. Of the, just those mean guys. And Coach Wentz, the guy before me, Dick Wentz was here for for 25 years. He always was told, "You guys got a good group of kids. They're just good people, and they are. They are good kids." And so sometimes I think they're too nice. You know, our guys are just good guys, and it comes down to them being being mean. You know, we're, we're searching to find that that next level of toughness and take our guys there, you know, get them out of their comfort zone in our training and get them used to having their backs against their wall and, and fighting through that. You know, Cody, I think, had that in high school. And, and so, um, you know, so it's a work in progress. You know, maybe we'll find some guys. We've got a kid that, that he's known since he was six, I think, coming in from uh, Nordonia, Northeast Ohio. Uh, in State champ. Prime. Yeah. yeah. And, that guy can win, too. And I think, you know, that's that's Cody at a, at a younger age right there, you know, and just just mean and, and tough and, and, and so to speak, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I, the guys we have on the team and the guys we've had, they've been great guys, and and sometimes you just got to get a little more uh, ah out of them is what I yell at them, and so you got to yell at me a little bit, and um, yeah, I think that's the hardest part of coaching is getting that out of some kids. You guys had a great season this year, one of your best seasons, I thought, and then the tournament, tournament time, you guys kind of stumbled a little bit. Yeah. You had a well, great dual year. What well, should I say that? Even then, I think we lost five or six matches by, that we split five and five. Um, we lost a couple more that we went four and uh, six with, and we lost two, two or three one-point matches. That, I mean, we were like six, seven individual matches away from winning six or seven more matches. Um, yeah, that's right. You're right there, man. Right. It's like so, literally right there before things are about to right. snowball for you and get better. And then, we and then the, the, the conference tournament was rough for you guys. Our, our Chris Vassar, 49-pounder, who... Um, if he had made weight, he probably would have got a large bid into the tournament, but he had a concussion, so he was out with concussion protocol. Um, Tyler Marinelli, our 65-pounder, was top 25 at some points throughout the year. I think it was top 15 after the scuffle. He uh, he had the flu. We didn't we didn't know it, and so he just kind of tried to hide it from us and, and just didn't have it when it mattered. And Boyce Cornwell, our heavyweight, was winning a match that he lost to the kid from SAUE during the year, and it was a great match up 4-2 going into third, and got hit with a splatel, and and just sort of felt it, it just as good as it could have been. It kind of we had some things come up that, that didn't work out, and that's the nature of it. And the nature of being in the Southern Conference too, of you know we can't have that bad day at our national tournament, our conference tournament. Like you can at a Big Ten or, or a MAC or Big 12, you know, okay, we had a slip up. There's a little bit of room for error at those tournaments. Right. You can lose a match. Right. You guys lose a match in yours, it's you're not tough. getting a bit. It's tough, you know, yeah. and, and the conference is getting better. You know, we took three guys. We had three guys top 20 all year long at 184. And Hunter Gamble was, was our was our guy. He was third in the conference, and but he was top 20, you know, to begin with. And we haven't had that in a while as a conference. And so at 25... Uh, Freddie Rodriguez and Nathan Crazier were wrestling each other in the blood round at the national tournament. How crazy is that? You know, and so... Um, Rizzadori had, you know... Yeah, yeah, you know, came out of, quote-unquote, nowhere. Had a had big win over Crushmer, I think, first or second round, and just put himself in great position, and so... Those guys are getting it done. Right. How do you guys get the, uh, the caveman, primal, get it done? I think that's just the challenge of... of 
continuing for me and my staff and me and our guys to get each to get to know each other, figuring out each other a little more every time. And so I'm excited. Cody with me for a second year of being together. You know, I, I felt bad. We had ten seniors this year. I kind of felt bad that he wasn't with me their junior year, so we could have given them a little more cohesion going into their last year. But um, you know, I think things are going to get better as we continue to to grow as coaches to figure out our guys a little better each time. So. What are you guys here looking for? When you go to recruiting and you, you go to the C3 and you come up down here to Georgia, right. what, what are you looking for in a kid? Honestly, in an event like this here, we're looking for how guys can train, you, you know? Um, we're one of the, we're probably, us in Chattanooga are the closest D1 schools to Georgia. And, and Georgia's getting better and the Southeast is getting better. And you know, we, we've done technique all morning and we're getting ready to crank out some live goes. And, I just want to see how guys get after it. You know, if you're going to be able to push yourself here, that's going to translate more in the, at that next level, I think, than just being able to learn moves and reproduce them. You know, we want to get get guys tired and, and push them here too, just to see how they're going to do in our room because it's going to be a different level. And I don't think people realize that you're on the ground level as you were you wrestled at Gardner yep. Webb, and you were in the transition actually. I was in the, my freshman year at Gardner Webb. We weren't allowed to qualify for the NCAA tournament. Where, where, so, did you guys come from D2 or NAI? Yeah, we went D2. We went NAI to D2 for about four or five years, and then we jumped D1. And so, okay. um, 2001, 2002 was our last year of that transition. So my sophomore year was our first year where we could qualify for NCAAs. And so it's been a, a process that whole that whole route. And so it's been fun. You know, I was, I was on the ground level of. Of, of competing, moving to the D1 level, and now as a grad assistant and then as a head coach of trying to continue to bring us there. I don't know if as an institution we were ready financially and support-wise to jump to D1 at the time. Um, and even now, I mean, we're, we're working with a low operating budget and a low travel budget, and then we just have to do what we can and raise money and, and improve and make the experience better and treat it like a real D1 program. And it's taken, taken a while to get where we are. You know, you always want it quicker. Um, reality that don't work that way so